Hello. So today we're taking a look at Johannesburg Airport from Innibuilds in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's go and have a look around the airport to begin with and then we'll work our way around some of the buildings a little bit closer as we get to them. So we're going to fly with the drone camera around the airport. So in the background you'll hear things happening. That's because I'm running FSLTL which is animating aircraft into the simulator and we're about to see a near miss on one of the runways where an aircraft just departed the runway while another aircraft was already accelerating along it which is always interesting so it's going to be noisy today I'm afraid but make no apologies for that it makes it a bit more fun to see doesn't it So if you've never used FSLTL before, it simulates traffic by building basically aircraft and routes into the AI engine of the simulator. So you can see there's some really nicely detailed terminals around the airport. We will come back and look at them. But to begin with, we just want to look around the outside of the airport complex. So I'm going to fly the drone camera around the outside of the complex just to show you the level of work that's gone into this is absolutely stunning actually. It's amazing. There's a big airport. It stretches on and on. Look, some of these buildings have nothing to do with the, the primary airport complex, but they've built them into it anyway. So we've got Emperor's Palace down here, which is a big shopping centre by the look of it. With entertainment. Very cool. And then further along, there's various logistics buildings and industry, but at the far end of the airfield, you've got tank farms, obviously, and radar here. Yeah. It's built really nicely, isn't it? And there's parking here for the staff, I'm guessing, but or it may be long-term parking, I'm not sure. But it's all got sunshades. Obviously there's not cars under all of it, but there is down this end. I can never get over how good the car models are. Some of them are very good, aren't they? Okay, so there's buildings on the other side of the airfield complex as well so we'll fly over there and then we'll go and have a look at the control tower as well we're over there there's various lakes around the place I'm not sure if that's part of the airfield or not or reservoirs I should say not lakes so there's a radio array here various outbuildings and again they're all done in wonderful detail I said we'd go and look at the control towers, didn't I? So there's two towers by the look of it, so we'll slow the drone camera down as we come in so we can control it semi somewhat accurately and fly around. If I just straighten the drone camera up, we can have a look inside. So there is, there are some known bugs in this early release of the Johannesburg scenery, which any builds are saying they're working on, like the vertical, obviously the vertical position of the staff in this particular room is a little bit out. So it kind of breaks the immersion, doesn't it? It does make me laugh though when things like that happen. It's easily done. Okay, so then we'll fly over to the main control tower, or the bigger control tower. So let's just go and have a look at the roof. Someone's spent an age doing this, and I bet nobody's given it any real love to go and have a look at it. It's well done, isn't it? It's a serious piece of kit there. Okay, so if we come back down into the control tower, you can see around the room 
The various stations are really nicely modelled. And the characters are very good quality. Can we read the charts? How good is the resolution on this stuff? Almost. Okay, so let's fly out through the window of the main control set. And I promised we'd go and look through the terminals, didn't I? So we'll start out at this end. Okay, we're all getting a bit blasé about this now, aren't we? But the quality that Simbri put into these things is incredible, isn't it? It is stunning to see this level of detail in the airport scenery. Let's go and fly our drone camera down through the terminal back towards the main buildings. So you can see all the travelators along here. It's very cool, isn't it? So if we fly out through the end, you can see there's the coach park. So let's go and look on the public side of the airport. How would we get in? Speed the drone camera up a little bit more. So there's drop-off points, obviously. Interesting. Oh, it's further around. Okay. That's the trouble with these gigantic airports. It's difficult to find your way around them. Yeah, so we've got departures. So all the signage is here on the public roads that connect with the airport. It's all really nicely done. You can see there's some great um, animation mistakes though, but that's mainly down to the simulator's um, problems, isn't it? So we've got a gas station here. I've been quite taken up with the airports that have been modelled. So we've got this rather posh airport here. Uh, sorry, airport hotel. Um, but there's several of them dotted around the site and they've all had a lot of care put into them. So if we go and have a look at this one over here. It's an apartment complex almost. So South African Airways and you can see the atriums and everything have been done really nicely. So if we go and speed our camera back up. So we've got a hotel here, City Lodge Hotel. We've got a train station down through here. I don't think there's any trains animated, but the station's done really nicely. So we lift up through the roof. Got another hotel over here. The Intercontinental, which has got this sculpture in its forecourt and it's got flags as well it's very nice okay so on the air side over here if we drop down we work we've already flown through that terminal over there 
Let's go and drop down into here. So this is, I guess, a shopping area. It's the main kind of commerce part of the airport. So all the adverts are in here, all the shop fronts are in here. It's nicely done. And I have no doubt that these animal drawings on the walls are probably accurate to the real airport. Very cool, isn't it? So we've got Starbucks, Byte, Nike, Zulu, another Starbucks, Out of Africa, and Gucci. And Prada, obviously. Okay, so it's time to go and get our 777 ready to go from Johannesburg over to Cape Town. So to do this, I'm going to follow a checklist. I'll try to put a link in the video. I'll try to remember to. So I tend to follow this. It's a functional checklist that I've written up that helps us um, go through what has to be done in the big jets, basically. So first things first, we're going to go overhead with Control-6 and turn the batteries on. And then we're going to go down to the tablet with Control-9, go to ground operations and request ground power to the aircraft. When it says release, it's already happened. So then we can go back overhead with Control-6 and we can go primary external power and secondary external power to on. And we can start the APU. Having done that, we can go and do the Adiru switch which is the inertial reference unit essentially and then go and turn the window heaps on turn on the IFE passenger seat lights and the cabin utility lights and then we can go and arm the emergency lights and cover them and we can turn on the passenger oxygen and recover the switch for it then we can go down to the FMC and we can go to... Oh, we're still waiting for the systems to fire up. So in preparation for doing the flight, I've actually gone and taken the liberty of creating a flight plan in Simbrief, which will shorten up our process to get us from Johannesburg to Cape Town. So we can see here we're taking off runway 3 left, doing the Ragu 3A standard instrument departure and then doing the Erda 1A uh, standard terminal arrival route into Cape Town landing on runway 01. So when this comes up, yes, we can get into FMC now. We can start actually programming it. So we can clear out any messages that appear. We'll just wait for this to come up properly. So the 777 does take a little while to boot up. If you go and switch on, oh, actually, the screen won't come up yet, but um, the APU will come on. It's just coming on. You can start to hear things. If we go outside, start to hear it. You can see the exhaust there, there's heat pumping out. But then it just takes a while once you've got electricity for the the systems to boot up. So give it a few seconds, it won't take long. You'll see everything flicker as power or you know as the various relays kick in to provide power because the modern aeroplanes um, do bus transfers automatically between the different power sources. There we go, look. It's coming up. It's having a think about it. So notice you've got nothing on the navigation display or the primary flight display yet because the Adiru system, the inertial reference unit, isn't working properly yet. So once that's all aligned and calibrated, this will all light up with information. Okay, so let's go down and do our route. So but remember, we're using Simbrief though. So we're going to go to the tablet first. We go into the EFB app and we request our data from Simbrief and there's our flight. So then once we've done that in here, we can come into the tablet, sorry, into the FMC. Go to position initialization, pick up the GPS unit position, drop it into inertial position to initialize it. Put in our reference airport. So F-O-A-R is the ICAO code for Johannesburg, Johannesburg, or is it F? F-A-O-R, sorry. It's a good job it checks things, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> then go to the route. 
So, because we have got the Simbrief route in the tablet now, if we go into route request, it will be listed in here. So, then we can load it. And we can set the payload according to the Simbrief data. And we can set the fuel according to the Simbrief data. And they're obviously putting messages down here, which we can clear back out. So then if one does appear, we know, you know something new being told to us. So then we can select that route and it's requesting the route so we just wait now for the systems to talk to each other so it simulates the speed of the real thing so we just sit and wait so the request has been sent and we wait a bit longer <laughs> and now we get the option to load the route so we'll do that and we wait a bit longer so it says route one uplink loading so we can clear that message we can see the Descent forecast is ready as well, so we can clear that. Wind data uplink is ready, we can clear that. So it's got the, the root information now, that's why it says activate. So we can say activate and execute, so everything that was in our Simbrief flight plan is now in our legs page. So we can go through to performance initialization, and we can start filling this in. We can't do everything yet. So it says, do you want to... it? Um, to use the initialized data we'll say yes so it's, again it's using the numbers that came out of Simbrief so it's picked up the cost index and the cruise altitude so uh, zero fuel weight will be automatic and then we can go through to thrust limit and take off and you'll notice on takeoff you haven't got any numbers for the V speeds yet so we can put in 15 degrees for the flaps though and we can calculate center of gravity so, how do we get the V-speeds? We have to go and tell the aeroplane where we're leaving so it knows what direction the runway is. So then it combines that with the wind and it can calculate its numbers. So, let's go and have a quick look at our Simbrief plan. Three left and the Ragu 3A standard instrument departure. So, runway three left and the Ragu 3A SID. Execute that. So then, we'll do the other end as well. So let's go and look at the arrival at uh, Cape Town. So we want the Erda 1A standard terminal arrival route and landing runway 01. So ILS for runway 01 and the Erda 1A star and execute that. Notice it's got an intersection in there so I expect if we look in legs, uh, we'll go and do it now actually, but if we look in legs you'll see there's probably a vector in there because, yeah, there it is. It just means that the the SID and the sorry the star and the approach don't connect, so there's a, a gap in between and it inserts vectors automatically. So, but we're not going to fly the whole route, so we don't have to resolve that right now. Um, okay, look, that's quite cool, isn't it? With um, FSLTL running in the background, you're getting actual traffic going through the airport for a change. So, um, what, was we, what are we going to do? We, get, we need to go and finish off init refs, don't we? So, go to the takeoff data. We put in 15 degrees. We've now got the numbers calculated for V speeds, so we'll transfer them across and accept them. And that's pretty much done. So, we've got the aeroplane ready. Okay. So, what does my checklist say next, having programmed through? Oh, we haven't quite got everything ready. Let's go and look at the legs page. Go to root data and we can load the wind data and execute it and that means basically if we go and look through any of the legs of the route and go and look in here you can see all of the estimate or the um how would you put it the the forecasted wind at altitudes along the route so it's all in its head so it means that the vnav can be calculated so much more accurately for example you can also do the same for descent, but we're not going to go there today. And we'll go and leave that on the legs page for the moment then. So what do we do next? Mode control panel. So control one takes us up to the mode control panel. We want to go and put the flight directors on. We'll set our cruise altitude. So we're going to go and put it put in, it was 38, wasn't it? Or at least that was the numbers it, no, it's got 34 here. So why did this have 38? But anyway, We'll put this to 34. It just goes to show you why you should check things. Not all automated systems are as good as you think they should be. 
We'll press B to calibrate the altimeters. That does all of them. Um, we're going to set the heading to our departure runway direction. So we are leaving runway 03. So, but we can, if we had another graph running, we could actually check the, the real num, you know, the real direction of the runway. So what we're going to do here is set this to 30 degrees. And we'll set heading mode on the autopilot. Oops. Didn't mean to click that then. So we'll set the heading mode, but we'll also pre-configure LNAV. Now, the reason I'm able to do this is because the flight directors are on and the um, inertial reference system is now working, which is why we've got data on these screens. We can also go and set VNAV. We can also set vertical speed at the same time. So what this will do is the aircraft will climb off the runway, say at, for example, 3,000 feet a minute. But it, it's going to go vertical speed until VNAV has been um, captured, if you want to call it that. And then it will switch over to it automatically. Same goes for heading select. So we're using heading select as a backup. But as soon as it realises it is on track, it will immediately go to LNAV. So it's quite a nice trick that the aeroplane has up its sleeve. We'll set the um, departure speed at 250 knots. So obviously you would look at your chart if you were going to, um, if you had any restrictions. But we're going to presume that we don't. Okay. So auto brake goes to rejected takeoff. So down here, normally you'd have a transponder on standby until you're close to the runway, but we're going to leave it. it. It's on by default in the PMDG aircraft, or in certainly in the 777s. And we're going to prepare for pushback. So overhead, we go and turn the seatbelt signs on to force everybody to go and sit down. We'll go and put the beacon light on. We'll go and turn the pumps on for um, the tanks that have fuel in, so that's just the wing tanks. And we come down into the cockpit and we're going to hold the tow brakes on for a few seconds just to make sure that the... I've just put it on. So if you hold the tow brakes on, it should release the parking brake. And then we can go down into the tablet again Go to ground operations, remove the wheel chocks from the aeroplane. Oh, we have to release the ground power first, I forgot that. And remove the chocks. And then in here, yeah, we would... There's, there's a whole process to this which isn't really simulated in the, si in the simulator that you would normally make sure your parking brake is set before you push back, but in this simulator you don't. So we're going to turn the parking brake off, press shift P, and you'll see the tractor will pull out to push us back. Now we can start our engines now to be honest, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So if we rotate the right engine start switch you'll see the engineering display will come up if you haven't told it not to and N2 will come up you can advance the fuel control switches in the 777 before you get to 20% or 25% it's electronically controlled so it really doesn't matter so as soon as you flick you know as soon as you go to start the engine you can do that so pushback is happening Oh, we're being pushed back at the same time as the South African Airlines plane over there. If I push back further, he could trot in front of us, couldn't he? Is he going to wait, or is he just going to double back? He's waiting, isn't he? No, is he... What's he going to do? He's going to cause a huge air crash. Which way is he going? Is he just done a 270? He has, hasn't he? <laughs> That's funny. So if I push back right the way to the other side, out of his way, then he can decide what he wants to do. So we can start the other engine while we're waiting. So start engine number one and turn on the fuel control. 
and we can clear the caution. I bet he's watching us thinking, what are they doing? So we're going to try and go back as far as we can. Oh look, we're going to have a bit of a standoff on the taxiway now. Will I clear that with my tail? Yes, I will. Just getting out of their way. So, that's enough to stop the pushback. So we've now started a pushback on the other side. I think I've told them both to go away now. Good. So, parking brake on so we don't creep forwards. We've still got a few things to do. So, overhead. We need to go and turn the APU off now, we don't need it anymore. We need to go and turn the hydraulics on, so all of these go to auto across the board. And the electronic, uh, sorry, the electric hydraulic systems go on. And we can prepare to taxi, so the taxi light is somewhere over here and I can never remember where things are. There we go. Taxi light is on and we can taxi out to the runway. So we said we were departing on a runway 03 left. So we want to go left. So let's go and have a look outside. Go and release that parking brake. So we just hold the tow brakes on and it will release on its own. Ease the throttles forwards. We'll go and put the flaps to take off position while we're taxiing. So this is the real reason for doing this, just to have a little look at this airport from the point of view of an aircraft. Very cool, isn't it? So remember what I said about positive thrust? At idle, the 777 will continue taxiing. So we want to carry on straight down. Uh, runway 3 left. Okay, so we're going all the way down where those two are going. taking off over here.
we don't need the whole runway, it's an enormously long runway. Nobody else waiting. Is there anybody coming in behind us? Can't see any lights out there. Because we've got not many air, um, air traffic controllers to tell us. So we're having to guess. I will do a Beyond ATC flight at some point soon. For those of you that are interested in it. Let's put the head tracking on. We just line ourselves up. So the caution we're just hearing is because we haven't done the checklist. So I'm going to break all the rules and sit here on the runway. Put the parking brake on for a moment and just hold. Which you would normally do anyway for separation, although it's quite a short separation most airfields. Um, we're going to go and turn on the strobes, which is over there. And turn the landing lights on. The transponder is already on. Make sure we've got TFC mode on, we have. And we're ready to go, basically. So, yeah, just ensuring all the modes are correct as we wish them to be. And, yeah, the reason this caution light is here, it's saying the checklist is incomplete. So you press checklist over here. While we were running through things in the cockpit, what we should have been doing is going pre-flight and saying, yes, we did the oxygen and the instruments going before start. And, yes, we did the doors and we did the MCP and the takeoff speeds and the, the pre-flight and the trim and the taxi and takeoff briefing and then before takeoff we've done that uh, we already did that one <laughs> before taxi we did that and that and that and that a checklist is complete okay so having done that the warning will go away okay so I'm gonna do this without head tracking so the reason it's come up with that warning is because I've opened the engines up with the with the parking brake on. So this is a comedy of errors at the moment, but I'm trying to think of doing too many things at once and thinking what do I need to show, what don't I need to show. Okay, so let's push the engines through. We're not using uh, toga mode on the engines, we're just using the throttles. So we're waiting for the vertical, or sorry, the um, rotate velocity. V1. And pull back. Got thin air, remember, here, so gear up. And we can engage the autopilot. And look, it's switched over immediately to LNAV and VNAV and speed control. So then we just need to control the flaps on the way out. So I'm going to leave the flaps in for the moment. We've still got one degree of flap. They're retreating to it right now. And it's just starting to accelerate. So we don't need to put the flaps up just yet. So we've already gone through the transition altitude. So we go and go to standard transition a standard barometric pressure. And we say goodbye to Johannesburg. So let's go and have a look at the city as we depart. Well, the autopilot's having a bit of a job. It must be quite blustery up here. Airplane's being pushed around, isn't it? So it's now following the standard instrument departure, basically. So if we were to go and look on here, or if we were to go and open Navigraph, for example, and go and unload, import from Simbrief, so it will get the flight we're actually doing. And there it is. And if we go then... Oh, sorry. There it is. <laughs> and then if we go and zoom in on ourselves and change the map to IFR so yeah it hasn't rendered the, 
the turn very well. Obviously, we're in a big heavy plane. It takes a while to turn, and we're still turning. If we went and looked at that as a diagram, get some idea. Anyway, on our way, so we've got through 10,000 feet, landing lights can come off. I'm going straight up to cruise following the restrictions for the standard instrument departure if there are any. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That was a, a first look at Johannesburg from Innybuilds. So you can see the airport vanishing behind us. And a little look at taxiing around it in the 777. And in the background we obviously had FSLTL injecting traffic which made it look quite interesting. So I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you again soon.